Good morning, everyone. This is at this news hour, and I'm Dana Gitan. President Salah Rekzodeh has been selected as one of the world's most powerful women for 2019 by Forbes. The president is the only African woman on the list. President Sahel Orkzaudi is a role model not only for Ethiopian women, but women all around the world. A seasoned diplomat and a veteran of the United Nations, Sahel Orkzaudi became Ethiopia's first female president in October 2018. In her first address to the parliament, she promised to be a voice for women and stressed the importance of unity. President Sahlawerk's appointment is a tremendously symbolic move for the country, opening the door for gender parity. Ethiopian Citizens for Social Justice and the soon-to-be-formed Prosperity Party said they are in the midst of preparations for the general elections expected in 2020. Leader of Izema Brian Unegga told ETV that the party will contribute its fair share for the peaceful conduct of the election. We have been working to create a party that contributes for a robust system. In this regard, we have managed to organize the party structure in no less than 400 districts. This huge grassroots base gives us an edge to compete effectively. We have given the mandate for the districts to choose their leader and field candidates on their own. We are now in the organization stage and speeding up the election. A genuine competition whereby winning and losing are considered possible outcomes is a goal for which Izema strives. We are totally against winning by fraud. So, once the elections are held and they are credible, we will concede losses while celebrating gains. If the results of a genuinely held election shows that we haven't been able to form a majority enough to establish the next government, then we will ready ourselves for another round of electoral competition. So, here is our call for the people to give votes based on our philosophy. For us, real victory comes from being able to hold truly democratic elections and then creating a situation whereby competitors accept results. Brian who also detailed plans by the party to contribute to a peaceful conduct of the elections. We will do everything we can to make the elections peaceful and credible. Primarily, when we signed the political parties agreement, we have also been organizing trainings for our members. On the other hand, the Prosperity Party is also undertaking ne necessary preparations for the 2020 elections. Uh, we have rebranded our party and intensified preparations for the election. The Prosperity Party has revised a PRDF's program in a significant way. This came considering realities on the ground. Our party envisions the creation of a prosperous nation in Africa in the year 2032. But what matters is not winning or defeating. We all have to work for an Ethiopia where government is elected democratically by the people. The upcoming election will be a showcase for a real democratic process. A high-level delegation led by Deputy Prime Minister Demak Amakonin traveled to Geneva, Switzerland to attend first global refugee forum. The Mega will deliver a keynote address during the three-day event, as well as hold discussion with humanitarian organizations on the sidelines of the forum co-convened by Ethiopia, Turkey, Costa Rica, Germany and Pakistan. Ahead of the forum, a two-day regional conference on delivering the Global Compact on Refugees' local approach to inclusion was held in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa on October 31, 2019. The conference brought together representatives and stakeholders from the East Africa region, including Ethiopia's Ministry of Peace, Mufaria Kamil, Executive Secretary of the UN Economic Commission for Africa, Dr. Vera Songwe, and Danish Ambassador to Ethiopia, Karim Paulson. 
The Geneva Forum is the first gathering at the ministerial level to follow up on the practical implementation of the Global Compact on Refugees affirmed at the UN in New York in December 2018. Ethiopia currently hosts close to a million refugees from neighboring countries. Ethiopia has said safe to launch its first ever satellite to space this Friday. If all goes as planned, Ethiopia, that will make Ethiopia the first nation in the Horn of Africa to do so. Yet, some argue space should not be a priority for Africans. Our staff reporter Ahaya Klilu has sat down with the Ministry of Innovation and Technology, Geta Umakra, and compiled the following story. There are few African nations who managed to send one and more satellites to space. Ethiopia will join this group in a few days. Yet critics say space is luxurious for nations who are struggling with their economics. The Minister Gitaon Mokria says the economic struggle is one of the reasons why Ethiopia needs the satellite. To, to the best of my belief, probably why our agriculture and why our mining sector or our uh, construction sector or other related sectors have not grown as required is probably for the very fact that we don't yet have this space technology. Had we had space technology and space applications already for the last 20-25 years, probably our agricultural sector, mining sector and other uh, sectors uh, I, I could have even grown much, much higher. But space is a foundation for the growth of agricultural sector, mining sector, construction sector, and other uh, sectors like monitoring and surveillance of big assets, national assets. The minister also highlighted how the new African satellite benefits the region and the continent. If we have one satellite, say one communication satellite over the, the Eastern African uh, um, space, then that one satellite can serve the whole Eastern African countries, not only Ethiopia, but every country in the Eastern African and probably uh, Central Africa countries as well. So if we take uh, seven, eight countries within the same geographical location, all of them, uh, it's not necessary that all of them have their own satellites. The satellite is said to be launched on Friday from China and with a control station here in Addis Ababa, known as Indo Observatory Center. The launching of the first ever satellite to East Africa will be transmitted live in different media outlets. Ethiopia finalized preparation to launch its first ever satellite into space on December 20. Ethiopian engineers who have been taking part in the grand project also expressed readiness to ignite and monitor the process by giving comments from the Intoto Space Observatory. Jerusalem Beza has the details. Space science has been effectively used in developed countries to improve and advance almost all socio-economic sectors, including aviation, transportation, communication, water management, and urbanization, among others. The use of space science technology remained minimal. Ethiopia has been trying to maximize its use of space science technology for all-round development. I am here located at 3,200 meters above sea level in Addis Ababa and observatory at the first research level optical observatory in Ethiopia and East Africa. Ethiopia's first ever satellite will be launched into space in December 70th this year. The satellite, which is said to be launched from China, but it will have its command and control center in Ethiopia here at Ntoto Space Observatory. China has helped in the endeavor, particularly in propping up the control station. Ground station can receive the ETRSS1 data and send the telemeter to the satellite and we can control the satellite. Now we are ready to launch the satellite and uh, we almost finished the installation of the ground station uh, to control and receive data from the satellite. So. As you see, uh, the equipment is and uh, the rugs and the antenna and the working station is ready to control the satellite as well as uh, to receive data from the satellite, which is uh, ETRSS-1. We are hopefully control uh, our satellite and manage what we expect from our satellite. They also talked of benefits they have gained while working with Chinese engineers. We got 
many things from them practically and we are participated in all installations for the ground station. We have to be able to cope up with the uh, technology, you know, space technology is uh, highly uh, applicable in countries which are very civilized. So this, this is a big opportunity for our engineers. Ethiopia's efforts will have a pivotal role for developing the space science industry in the country through motivating the young generation, they said. Ethiopia is a satellite in the fact that Ethiopia will have its own satellite is an inspiring development. This will help raise our awareness and speed up development in space technology. This satellite has its own key role to really to tackle our problem. And also uh, for me, this satellite is a meaning really to inspire our young people. I think we would make uh, launching a satellite would mean that, uh, you know, sometimes you'll have uh, owning a satellite is not simple. So it would mean, uh, you know, it would, it would make some uh, influence to the, to the community and to, uh, to the nation in general. So once uh, you launch a satellite, you'd be uh, registered or you'd be, you'd have, uh, you know, it's considered as you have a big asset, you know, in space. So it would be very uh, promising. Ethiopia's multispectral remote sensing satellite is expected to gather data inputs related to weather patterns for better agricultural planning, drought early warning, forestry management, climate change and environmental protection. Youth drawn from all over Walaita zones solidified their position on the quest of statehood by their people. During discussions here yesterday, the youth said the process should be finalized in a peaceful and legal manner. Although the quest for statehood was endorsed by the Walaita zone council months ago, it has never made it to the floor of the South State Council. These Walaita activists and youth say is a process which is an open transcription of the right to statehood enshrined in the Article 47 of the Constitution. Chief Administrator of the Walaita Zone said the decision by the Walaita Council has long been referred to the South State Council but has been undoubtedly entertained. He said the zone calls upon concerned bodies to pay attention to the quest. <laughs> It has been quite long since the quest was approved by the Zonal Council and referred to the South State Council. We demanded speedy response to our demands, but to no avail. So we are going to press ahead with our demand for statehood. The youth issued an eight-point resolution after extensive discussions where they underlined that the quest for statehood, though perfectly legal, has taken longer than should have been the case. They further urged the South State government to respond to their request before the deadline. We urge the federal government to respond to our request and help conduct the referendum as speedily as possible. The legally set deadline is December 20, 2019.